Invesco Funds has graced us with a new semiconductor ETF and it's free. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Skylar James. Today we're looking at the Invesco SOX Q ETF. Is this a new approach to investing in the high flying semiconductor sector? or just a clone of what's already available to us as investors. Because you've stopped by the channel before, you know I love three things. Investments with exceptional growth, under the radar stock picks, and bacon. When I heard about this new semiconductor ETF from Invesco, my investment juices started to sizzle. Doesn't Invesco already have a semiconductor ETF? This video will help you understand how this new Invesco ETF is different what it means for your portfolio, and why is it free? Okay, so I don't wanna seem clickbaity, so I'll answer why it's free first. The ETF space has been on a tear the last few years. We saw numerous funds offering 0% expense ratios in an effort to attract your investment dollars. Now, the vast majority of these are not free into perpetuity, but we'll offer it as an introductory rate and then add back in that expense ratio after a set period of time. While the free ETF war has died down since its peak in 2019, we still see the occasional entrant that's doing that. And that's exactly what SOXQ is doing now in waiving that fee through December of 2021. Even after that, it's only 19 basis points. That's a whopping discount to the mainstay semi-ETFs we're all familiar with. Currently, the established Invesco Semiconductor ETF PSI is nearly triple the cost of SOXQ. That's how you enter a crowded ETF space with a new product and get people talking about it. As an investor, give me something that I want to, to see, something I want to notice, like a new lower fee. Well, they did just that by offering it for free. So semiconductor ETFs have returned 370% in just the last five years. And Sox, the iShares player on the team, returned over 650% from 2010 through 2020. Numbers don't lie. Semiconductor companies are the Michael Jordan of any portfolio. So what gives? Why is Invesco issuing a second semiconductor ETF when they already have one, especially when their first semi ETF is holding 600 million in assets. That's not pocket change, that is serious money. PSI has been around since 2005. The index is rebalanced four times a year based predominantly on momentum, quality, and management, also known as factor investing. A quick glance at the holdings generate names you'd expect to see in a semiconductor ETF. Micron, AMD, Intel, and LAM. Even with those frequent rebalances, it wouldn't be right to call this an actively managed ETF. Rebalancing four times a year isn't active to me in the investing sense. Kathy Wood is changing her portfolio on a daily basis. That's active. But Invesco calls this strategy dynamic. The ability to change. In fact, I counted no less than 72 different Invesco ETFs that carry this dynamic label. So this fluid portfolio is probably why Invesco demands such a high management fee. It's worth noting that the extra money spent in fees didn't translate to outperformance over the last five years. Vesting 101, higher fees don't usually equal higher returns. Back to SOXQ or Sock Squatch, whatever, whatever we're calling it. And the other shoe drops. This new ETF tracks the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. Not dynamic, not with holdings arranged by a fund manager like PSI, but weighted by plain old market cap. This exact index tracked by SOX, S-O-X-X from iShares, in fact, remember that 650% return for the iShares ETF during the previous decade? Compare these holdings, SOXQ on the left, SOXX on the right. They are the exact same. That's what Invesco is offering us with this new ETF. The standard proven semiconductor India index wrapped in a lower management fee. And if you want more semiconductor analysis, check out my semiconductor video on why semis will be one of the strongest areas of growth this decade. New investors should feel good about adding SOXQ to their holdings. It's a great ETF at a great price. 
with the power of Invesco backing it. With the similarities, would any of us be surprised if iShares didn't just lower their fee to match Invesco? Probably the biggest takeaway for seasoned investors is that SOXQ isn't some new form of factor investing or full of holdings picked by artificial intelligence. It's just the proven market cap weighted semiconductor index, a smart and diversified way to play a growing sector. So I'm curious, do you have investment exposure to semiconductors? When investing in a sector, do you prefer to hold individual names or a basket of stocks? Let me know why in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one. Congress looks primed to push heaps of money into this, in, into this sector, uh, but I think we will still see bottlenecks for quite some time just based on the manufacturing lead time. I uh, hope you've got your can opener on pre-order and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.